these are the last lines of lesson two here. 76 to 80, salve, salve te omnes. Aeolus is going to give his response to Juno's offer. Aeolus haec contra tuus o regina quid optes explorare labor, mihi iussa capessere fas est. Aeolus, and you got to put in dixit, said, hike these words contra in return, and Aeolus is the subject. So Aeolus said these words in reply. Tuus, o regina, quid optes explorare labor, those go together, yours, O queen, and that's evocative there, yours, O queen, is, you got to put in an est, is, an ellipsis there, est is missing, is the labor. Yours is the work, O queen, to explore, oh, sorry, to explore what you wish. I pointed the wrong thing there. To explore what you wish. Kind of like a little tiny clause there. And the quid is referring to the labor. Yours, O queen, is the labor. To explore what you wish. But your, your job, this is your job to figure out what you want to do. In a way, he's washing his hands of this, meaning... If he does it, he's saying, it was really all your idea. It's not my fault, I'm just carrying out orders. Mihi usa capesere fas est. It is right for me. Remember, fas is right before the gods. Mihi, of course, is a dative. It is right for me to capesere, to undertake... Pesere, the yusa, the commands, or what has been ordered. It's right for me to undertake what has been ordered, or the orders. So really washing our hands of this. I'm just following orders. We might have some bad consequences from this storm. Some people might get angry, such as Neptune, which is going to happen. But I'm just following orders. I'm not the one who is really figuring out this labor, this work here. Tu mihi quad cumque hoc regni, tu sceptra ioemque concilias, tu das epulis acumbere divum, nimborumque facis tempestatumque potentem, potentem. Aeolus says, you concilias, you win over, for me, me, he, and you is the subject, right? And since we actually have the two, he's really emphasizing it. You went over for me. Quod cumque hoc regni. Whatever, and this is genitive, of a kingdom. Hoc est, you got to put in a est. Whatever of a kingdom this is. One more time, you win over for me whatever of a kingdom this is. And this is a far tells us this is an expression of modesty, meaning, oh, this kingdom's not so great, and you give it to me. You've won it for me. And you, conchilias, can also be to unite. Think of reconciliation, that word. And you unite mihi for me, the sceptra. The scepters of power, right? Yoemque and Jupiter. So you're my buddy, you know, when it comes to getting me in good with Jupiter here, since that is your husband. You unite for me whatever of a kingdom this is. You unite for me the scepters of power, meaning and Jupiter. You, look at this anaphora here, we got you again, we're really emphasizing you. 
you, and we had Tuus or up here. You got a theme going on here. It's talking to Juno, ver deferring to her. You give das from do dare, and take that mihi again to me, to acumbere to recline. Epulis, and this is a. This is a dative with a compound here with a cumbere, Far tells us. To the banquets, Epulis means banquets, Diwum, of the gods, and yes, that is Diwarum, syncopated. One more time, you give to me to recline at the banquets of the gods. Remember the Romans do recline at the table. Okay, this last bit here, nimborum que facis tempestatum que potentem. And you facis, you make, and you got to put in a me here, me, accusative, potentem. The one ruling. You make me powerful. You make me ruling. And Far tells us that potentum takes genitive, this adjective. So we've got genitives here because of that. You make me ruling what? The clouds and the storms. One ruling of clouds and of storms. And these are genitive plurals. Here, so one more time. You uh, reconcile for me whatever of a kingdom this is. And you... Oh, we got another two there. I didn't even see that one earlier. Two. Lots of anaphora. And you unite for me the scepters of power and Jupiter. You give to me to recline at the banquets of the gods. This is to you give. It's like you uh, provide for me. You give me the right to recline at the banquets of the gods. And you make me the one ruling, the powerful one, of clouds and storms. And Far has a little note that the lesser gods are depending on the greater gods. I think it was in Far. Maybe it was in another edition I read. But uh, Aeolus is dependent on Juno, as he t says here. And uh, it's all about Juno. It's whatever she wants, and he's just got to go along with it. He doesn't really have much choice, is how he makes it sound. So at the end here, we know that uh, Juno has asked Aeolus to send the winds to destroy Aeneas' fleet. And Aeolus has let us know that he's going to do it. And uh, he's also washed his hands of this deed, to some extent putting the responsibility on Juno. And Juno doesn't seem to mind that, uh, as long as she gets her way. So in the next lesson, we will find out the results of this agreement between Aeolus and Juno, and the wreckage that ensues from Aeneas's fleet as these winds are released to stir up the sea. Wale!